Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Canadian Apartment Properties Real Estate Investment Trust or Caprity stock. I will discuss their business, their future plans for 2022, their dividend or distributions, the risk associated with this company. And finally, I will provide a detailed stack analysis using my personal discounted cash flow model using Fund From Operation or FFO4 REITs. And we'll then provide you with the fair value of this REIT depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 54 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly dividend with a yield of almost 2.6% and the market capitalization of the company is around 9.5 billion Canadian dollar. Caprit had a very nice capital return in the last few years which is almost matches that of S&P 500 in the past five years which is amazing for a Canadian REIT and it shows the potential of this interesting business which can not only provide you with monthly distribution as a REIT but also capital growth in the long term. Caprit shares price recently had a 12% correction from all-time high but it's not clear if it's a good buy in this market or not and I hope in this video I can help you with your research about this REIT. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor. This video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold, or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion, and you should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, let's start the video. Caprit is one of the Canada's largest real estate investment trusts, and to be accurate, it's the second largest Canadian REIT at the moment. They were the largest a few days ago, I think, but the recent pullback in the share price and in the general market caused Caprit to move down the list, and now it's the second largest REIT in Canada. Caprit owns approximately 67,000 suites, including condo apartments, townhouses, and manufactured housing sites in Canada and Europe, mostly in Netherlands, and I think somehow in Ireland as well. In Canada, most of their suites are located in Ontario. According to the last presentation, 44% of their units are in Ontario, which is a big chunk of their business. Other than that, they have a nice geographical diversity across various provinces in Canada, from East Coast, Nova Scotia and PEI to West Coast, BC and Alberta. I personally lived in one of their properties when I was a student and yeah, I cannot say it was the best experience ever, but they actually own nice properties, which I show a few of them here. The rents for premium locations are absolutely crazy. So two bedroom apartment is starting at $4,200 per month is beyond outrageous. And I don't know what to say about it, but it is the product of this crazy housing market in Canada and particularly in Ontario. Caprit will expand their business mainly by buying new properties in Netherlands and Canada. In the middle of the pandemic in 2020, they spent $820 million to buy 3,200 suites. And in 2021, they spent almost $800 million to buy 3,100 new suites, which shows they are aggressive in terms of growing their portfolio. The main mechanism to raise funds in REITs are share dilutions, and Cap Caprit actually did share dilutions in the past in order to fund their operations. And as you can see here, the total number of shares of the company increased by more than 40% from 2018 to 2020 alone, which is not good for shareholders in general in itself, but this is normal for REITs. What matters for me is that they use these funds to grow their business and ultimately return value to shareholders via expansions and exponential growth. In the same period, total assets, operating cash flow, and free cash flow of the company increased significantly, which means the management know what they're doing and they are creating value for investors. Caprit was able to perform similarly to S&P 500 and in the past five years, and its share price increased by almost 80% in the last five years. Part of this increase is in share price was because of the growth in the business and part of that was just the market valuation of apartment and residential REITs, which I will touch base in the next sections of the video. In terms of the business growth, they were able to consistently grow their FFO or funds from operation by almost 13% year over year in the past five years and their FFO per share by almost 70% year over year which while maintaining almost 98% and 99% occupancy for their units. 
In the last year alone, they improved almost all aspects of their balance sheet, including the revenue, which is increased by 5.3% year over year, and their payout ratio, which is reduced by 1%. All in all, it's amazing for, for cap rate shareholders. The company has excellent track record of paying dividend, or I should say distribution, as this is a REIT, and increasing the distributions year after year. They currently pay $1.45 per share in dividend or in distributions annually, which is an annual 2.65% yield. They of course pay this dividend monthly. This yield is not really attractive for a REIT compared to, to their peers, which pay distributions with 4, 5, 6, and even 7% yield, but they're absolutely conservative in terms of the dividend payout ratio, and they pay close to 62% of their FFO to shareholders, which leaves them with a huge room to increase dividends in the future. In the last five years, they actually increased the dividend by only 2.7% year over year, which is very a small increase in the dividend. It seems cap rate management is more focused on capital growth than distributions, which can be a good thing if you, are, if you care more about capital growth. Caprit was able to collect almost 99% of rents in 2021, which is amazing considering the global pandemic and lockdowns and everything. And that's mainly because Caprit is a residential rate and everybody needs a place to live in. Their dividend payout ratio is also pretty low, close to 62%, as I mentioned before, which is definitely lower than average for REITs in Canada. It means their dividend is also pretty safe, and they will probably continue to grow their dividend year over year. They also have a relatively low debt to book value of around 37%, and interest coverage ratio looks totally fine and healthy for a REIT. Overall, while raising interest rates is not good for REITs in general, I don't think cap rate will be in any significant hardship, financial hardship in the near future, and I'm not concerned with their debts or their ability to pay dividends. Okay, this is the favorite part of the video where I can show you my stack analysis based on financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted cash flow model which basically estimates value of stocks based on projections for their future cash flows. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years and then discount the future cash flow into the present value of the stock based on my expected rate of return. So I start with the past four quarter FFO or funds from operation per share of the company. And based on three different scenarios, I predict the future FFO of the company in the next 10 years. In the bear case or the most, or the most negative case for the stock for, the, for this REIT, the company can grow 6% in the short term and then the growth will drop to 5% in the long term. The 6% growth is coming from the growth in the business, the dividend growth and also the dividend itself. I try to be a little bit optimistic about valuation of residential REITs even in a bear market and consider the thermal multiple of price to FFO of 18 for this case. For normal case, I considered a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 22, which is the historical average multiple for this company in the last few years. For the bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grow by 10% in the short term and then it drops to 7% in the long term. And I considered a terminal multiple of 25, which is a bull multiple for this company and it is absolutely optimistic outlook for the market valuation of a REIT. For growth stocks, I usually expect 15% year return year over year, and for dividend stable stocks, I expect 10% return year over year. So if I give a 50% chance to normal case, a 25% chance to the bear case, a 25% chance to the bull case, and if I expect 10% return from this stock, the fair value of this company is 38.41 Canadian dollar, which means compared to current share price of almost $54, the shares traded are traded at 28% premium today, which is not a buy according to the model. And remember, I was very, I was pretty optimistic in my market valuations. It means if you expect 10% return on your money, this company is probably not going to deliver that 10% year over year return for the next 10 years. If I put 6% as my expected return, you will see that the current stock price is at 3% discount for a 6% return year over year. It means you can expect the company to return close to 6% per year at the current share price, which is absolutely not enough for me. 
it's always fun to see what analyst predictions are for the company and according to Yahoo Finance, the analyst price target for this company is currently at $68 per share for 2022 with a buy rating. I'm not really agree with, I don't agree with this analyst here, but hey, time will tell who is right about the company. At the end of the day, if you want exposure to residential real estate markets via REIT and get paid monthly with distributions, CapRIT can be a good stock to look at as it has a strong fundamentals. Personally, I would not buy CapRIT here as it cannot provide 10% return year over year. And in my opinion, it's extremely overvalued at current share price. I have CapRIT in my watch list and if there is a huge pullback and correction to the share price, I would pick it up. Yeah, if the share price drops below $40, I would probably pick up CapRIT. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment and let me know what stocks you like me to review next. And please consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Farewell.